lights. Dude, let's go. Oh my goodness. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Unseen Outdoorsman. And today we're going to be so doing something a lot different on the channel. Uh, this is not your typical fishing or kayak video that you see from us. This is a little bit different. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, and that's uh, vehicle lanolin undercoatings. Um, so vehicle undercoatings as a whole, I will say, they have a lot of controversy around them, um, not particularly pertaining to these, but pertaining to things like rubberized coatings, uh, asphalt-based coatings, even some paints, things like that. Um, and rightfully so, you know, if it's not done properly, you could seriously run into some problems and make it worse for yourself. Um, and if you're like me, you know, you have a new-ish vehicle, um, not like an antique or anything, but newer, uh, and it's starting to show some age, you know, it's getting up there, um, and it's starting to, you know, see the effects of living in New England, uh, with all the rust that they, and all the salt that they spray on the roads and things like that, so, um, doing something like this, in my opinion, turns the 10-year lifespan of a vehicle nowadays to, if you take care of it, double to triple that, um, and this is what these are designed to do, so, Things like rubberized coatings, you know, yes, they work, but like I said, if done improperly and that rust is still on there, all that's going to do is just cover it up. Over time, that's going to bleed straight through the rubberized coating and cause an even bigger problem because it wasn't taken care of properly. Um, and I don't see this talked about nearly as much, but if you're like me, um, I don't have time to take my bed off my frame, you know, hit it with grinders and things like that, get it completely onto bare metal. And then, you know, top coat it, you know, throw primer, top coat, rubberized coating, all that stuff. That's a lot of work. And it's not a bad thing to do if you have the time. But if you're like me, I don't have that kind of time. You know, we all work full-time jobs and things like that. So um, this, this stuff, I feel, is a great, great option for many vehicles. I wouldn't spray these on new vehicles, but older vehicles, vehicles starting to show some surface rust, vehicles starting to develop some bigger rust. Um, that hasn't developed into like rot or anything that will compromise your frame. Uh, this stuff I feel is 100% worth going for. Um, and I would say there's three main options. There's a fourth one, but I don't really, I haven't used that one, so I don't want to speak on it. But there's fluid film, there's wool wax, and there's PB Blaster Surface Shield. So what these are is they're lanolin-based coatings. And that is designed to be a breathable, wet coating that you spray on your frame um, last give or take about a year or one, you know, intense winter with lots of salt and things like that. Um, they're not permanent coatings, so you will have to reapply them yearly. But in my opinion, the benefits of these far outweigh, uh, things like rubberized coatings and things like that. So what exactly is this? So this is, this is not a paint by no means. This is a paint. Um, this is, you have to spray it via two options. You can go with the aerosol forms and there's aerosol forms of both of these as well. Or you can do the bulk style, which if you're going to do this, I recommend buying them in bulk. It's just buy once, cry once. And, um, what these do is you spray them on through an air compressor and an undercoating gun. I'll actually show you the, under, the undercoating gun later in the video that I use, but you spray these directly onto your frame. It's no problem whatsoever if the existing rust is already on there. It's actually what these are supposed to do. Um, you spray these directly onto your frame. I would hit it with an air compressor um, just to get like the big stuff off, like stuff that, that I can get off from just spraying air from an air compressor. I would just take a quick once over, just hit it, just quickly go through it with an air compressor. But you spray these right onto your frame. What these are gonna do is they're gonna seep into your frame. They, Like I said, they don't dry. You spray these right on. They're gonna seep into the metal. They're going to pull that moisture and salt out and they're going to keep the new moisture and salt away from that frame. These have a lot of benefits. So once you spray that on your frame, it's gonna be perfectly fine for one year. Um, obviously, depending on use, you know, if you go through an undercarriage wash a lot, if you really beat up on your frame, you know, you, it might last a little bit less, but um, for most people, for most daily driving vehicles, you know, all of these can get through one complete winter, no problem. Um, some a little bit better than others, actually, but all of them can easily get through a, a winter's worth of driving. Um, and a winter worth of salt, more particularly. But when it comes to these, when you spray them, they are actually going to creep. So especially with the fluid film and the PB Blaster Surface Shield, we'll get a little more into pros and cons of all of these, actually, because they're not all exactly the same. But 
with fluid film, for example, if I were to spray this onto my frame, really coat it inside of the frame, outside of the frame, every single inch, if I were to, you know, find myself in a situation where a little piece of it eventually started to fall off the frame or something like that, this is actually going to self heal. So other parts that I sprayed are actually going to fill that spot that washed off. It's actually going to fill that in. So there's a lot of benefits to this. I, it's, it's hard to fully explain it in one video. Um, my recommendation, um, there's a lot of good videos out there on this product here, Fluid Film. Um, my recommendation is don't let this be the only video that you watch if you want to make a decision on this. But um, in my experience, I've been spraying this stuff for over five years now. Um, I find myself going back to fluid film, but I do see a place for wool wax and, you know, PV blaster surface shield. Um, so now that I've kind of explained what these do and how much different they are to paint, um, and how much they do work because, you know, we're going to take a look at my frame later on in the video on my 2014 Chevy Silverado, but, uh, that frame is in great condition, um, because I, you know, take the proper, uh, measurements to oil out my frame and really protect it. Um, and this stuff, you know, I've, I've grown to trust this product a lot and, you know, it's definitely paid off. So before we get into the actual frame undercoating that we're going to be doing in this video, I want to talk very quickly about the, how these products are different. And then we're going to be showing how I set up the fluid film into the undercoating gun and then we spray it. So when it comes to fluid film, I'm actually going to leave a little, um, picture on the bottom here that explains fluid film as best that I can describe it here but I'm measuring them in a couple different ways. So when it comes to durability with fluid film, it's a great product. I love it. Um, but I would only push this for one complete year. Um, so from October to October of next year, um, that's how long I would use this frame coating and that's all it's advertised to do. Um, but again, once that next year rolls around, you just recoat it again. You can go, you can go right over fluid film. You can add layers to fluid film and that only helps you. Um, so if, so if you go another year with fluid film and you realize there's still plenty on there, you can take another, just coat it right over again and you'll have even more protection. But fluid film, it is a lot thinner compared to, um, wool wax. We'll get into wool wax in a minute here, but, um, a lot thinner compared to wool wax, but there is a trade off for that. So yes, it is thinner and you probably shouldn't go through an undercarriage wash every day while it's winter time. But you know, with that, you have to have faith in this product that's going to work. So I wouldn't take you through the undercarriage wash every day, but um, the, the trade off of that is the creeping ability of this product. So when, like I just talked about, when I spray this on the frame, if a part of a tiny little piece of it washes off or I missed the spot when I was spraying, uh, this fluid film is actually going to so seep into that spot that I missed and it's going to just protect that frame even more. So that's what it's designed to do. That's my, one of my favorite parts about this product. And my next favorite product is the price. So I'm going to only compare the pricing on five gallon uh, versions of this. So five gallon version of this and five gallon version of this. Um, the fluid film is the cheapest option of the three that I've found. You could probably get, uh, you could probably get a little bit cheaper and probably get that a little bit cheaper too, but um, cheapest product of all of them. And in my opinion, this is the one that I recommend after using all three, I strongly recommend fluid film out of the three. And I'm not being paid to say any, any of this, by the way, this is all just my personal experience. Um, but fluid film is my go-to. Next, we're going to talk about wool wax. So I actually have this in black here. Um, as you can see, I've used quite a bit of it here and it's all messed up. But um, the durability of uh, wool wax is the best of the three. Um, this stuff sprays on a lot thicker compared to fluid film and surface shield. Um, but the trade-off to that is you get zero creep. Um, or significantly less creep, um, probably more accurate. Um, so this stuff, yes, it does work. Um, and it works the same way that fluid film does the same principle. It is more, it is a lot thicker and a more durable coating, but the trade off is you don't creep. So this stuff will not creep around as much. So if I spray this onto the frame and I miss the spot and that spot gets hit with salt corrosion, things like that, this is not going to creep into that spot. So just keep that in mind as well. And the price is a little bit more than this stuff would be in a five gallon uh, container here. Uh, this stuff's gonna be a little bit cheaper, not significantly cheaper between the two, but this stuff will be a little bit more expensive. Finally, we're gonna be talking about probably the most interesting one here. So this is PB Blaster Surface Shield. So I only have it in aerosol can right now. Um, I'll leave links to five gallon buckets of all these, but um, PB Blaster Surface Shield. So this stuff, in my opinion, is very durable. 
It is not very thick either. It's probably slightly thicker than this stuff is. Mind you, that's when this stuff is stirred and when this stuff is stirred. Um, it's extremely close, like the differences to me are negligible, but um, the P glass surface shield, I would say is a hair thicker than fluid film when it's being sprayed out of a five gallon bucket. Um, but it still creeps. So this stuff is kind of the best of both worlds. It's durable, it creeps, and it's not super thick. So you really get the best of both worlds. This stuff is advertised actually as a two year coating. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, in my opinion, I wouldn't push my luck with that, especially when it's not super expensive to just reapply every year. I wouldn't do that, but I can see the point in this as well. To some of you right now, this probably feels like it's a no brainer, but the trade off is in a five gallon bucket, this is significantly more expensive than, than this guy. Um, in my opinion, I think it's just a no brainer to go with this stuff. Like I said, all of this stuff is gonna protect your frame, but I feel like after many years of using all three, I feel like fluid film is the best value. Um, but again, Surface Shield, I actually strongly recommend Surface Shield in the aerosol cans to do touch-ups for this guy or this guy. Uh, in my opinion, that's the best way to use this stuff. If you're looking for one that can do all, I would say Fluid Film is your best choice. So, now that we quickly went through all three, I want to show you how I set this up um, to get ready to spray. So that's going to include, you know, stirring, um, getting the right amount. So I'm going to show you the undercoating gun as well, and then we're going to undercoat my frame really quick. So... Um, and that'll probably be a time lapse. So we'll get to the next part of this video now. Okay guys, so I am going to show you how to properly stir this stuff. We just went through uh, what this really is and how it differs from the other major brands of this. Uh, today I'm gonna to be quickly showing you how to stir this stuff before we get to spraying. So this is a stirrer that I have. Got my little drill here. And just a little disclaimer, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not gonna claim to be a mechanic, uh, but I have been doing this for many years here. So just, All right, so that's on. I'm just gonna try to remove all this. I can't get my glove stuck. There we go. Uh, wear a lot of protection when doing this. Um, it's not toxic, but it is very messy. Um, and try to do this on a pretty warm day, because if you don't, the fluid film just becomes way too viscous to do much with. So there you go. That's the five gallon jug of it right here. Got the stirrer on. All right, so I'm just gonna stir going up and down. So I'm gonna put this back in the bag once I'm all set with it, but that's now disgusting. And all right, so make sure you wear clothes that you don't care about just in case you, you know, get it all over yourself. Like I said, it is very messy, but I have, uh, I have mouth protection, I have eye protection, and I'm gonna be wearing um, a hood over me just to prevent that. So we are actually going to put on the lid to this. I bought a special lid that you can pump out of. We're gonna throw that on, I'm gonna fill up these buckets. Okay, so I got this guy here. This is a Kelsport Products Wool Wax Pro Gun here. Uh, this is the best sprayer for this stuff, um, in my opinion. So, get this ready here. So I'm gonna fill up, I'm gonna fill up all three of these things. So we're just gonna hook up the compressor and we're ready to go. Okay guys, so this is the underneath of my 10 year old truck. It's a 2014 Chevy Silverado. Um, sorry if you can't fully see it, but the frame itself is in very good shape. Um, I had a piece of it re-welded um, that was caused by the previous owner uh, in the back corner over there. I'll show you guys that later. 
but in overall it is in very good shape um, but we're gonna be reapplying it this is the layers of fluid film on here to begin with um, so this just gives you a good idea of what to expect long term but yeah this is what we got right now so we're gonna get spraying <laughs> Okay guys, so, I'm sorry if it's hard to hear, I have the, have the mask on, but, okay. So, as you can see, sorry if it's hard to see at any point, but that's all the fluid film I sprayed on. Every square inch of the outside of the frame is coated in this stuff. Um, as you can see, I went heavy on it, um, did not go light, but over time, all this blotchiness and this heavy stuff is going to start to spread out. Um, so it won't look as bad and this yellow is gonna fade. It's gonna turn into like a brown or a dark dark gray um, As you can see every square inch is sprayed everything that I could get to um, But if I miss a spot like we said earlier in the video, it's gonna spread out and things like that um, So if you want to head to the back here um, This was the cross member that was repaired by a professional repair shop um, That's negligence from the past owner. I got this truck about two years ago so, um, I've really, really done a good job of staying on top of this. I did this on my old car as well. Um, you guys will know I had that Sierra. Um, so, as you can see underneath the frame here, sorry if it's hard to see at any point, but really, really went heavy. I gotta touch up on that spot, actually. Um, but went super heavy, so I didn't have to do this again um, until another year. So, yeah, that's why I get the five gallon jug. Um, really, really spared no expense here. Um, so now we're going to tackle the inside of the frame, and they make a special wand for that. Um, sorry if I'm talking weird, I'm, the, the mask is coming up to my mouth here, but um, they make a special nozzle for that that has a five-directional spray, and that'll actually um, really cover the entire inside of the frame, which should be pretty easy, shouldn't be, should be pretty fast to do that. So um, yeah, we're going to take care of that, but as you can see, everything is fully coated, ready to go for the winter. So I am absolutely exhausted. Um, I was at that for probably four hours of just spraying, make sure I got everything that I could. I did that on a six gallon air compressor. I'm sure people will rate it much higher as the right compressor to use, but I got away with a six gallon compressor. Um, all I did guys, like we said in multiple times in this video, I just sprayed it like a paint gun across the entire frame. I kind of had to feather it because it was a six gallon compressor, but I just sprayed it all throughout. If I missed a tiny spot or any of those like big you know, blotchy spots, that'll all kind of spread out and fade away over time. So it won't look like that all the time, but I hit everything. I took that special wand that I showed you. Um, you can't really explain this on video, but I st stuck it right to the holes of the frame, held down the trigger and then slowly brought it out. That's what you're supposed to do. But that whole, that whole thing is completely covered in fluid film. Now my entire frame is covered in fluid film. The only things that you want to avoid is things that get extremely hot. So you want to try to avoid your engine at, at as best you can. Uh, you wanna try to avoid your exhaust as best you can, and then you wanna obviously try to protect your brakes. I think if you have access to a lift, I'd probably say just use that because crawling around the floor like that, especially if it's um, wicked cold out or anything like that, it's not fun. Um, do this on a warmer day as well because the fluid film won't flow right if it's wicked, wicked cold. It was like 65 today, so it should be fine. Um, but yeah, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I know there's a lot of misconceptions around fluid film, people thinking it's paint and that it hardens. I hope I explained that properly to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to comment down below. But we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to go take a shower. See you later.